Hey guys, before today's video starts, I just wanted to announce that I do have new t-shirt designs available. We have the Coffee and Rabbits t-shirt. This explains my life to a T. You can pick these up on my website, tealstonehomestead.com, and every purchase helps me out. It helps me to keep creating for you guys, and uh, I hope you really enjoy the designs. I designed these t-shirts myself, and I really enjoy making them. Uh, I'm just really excited that I actually had time to make a new one, and hopefully we'll have more here soon. I also want to point out that this is post-editing me, and uh, this video is very jumbled, but that kind of explains my life right now, so um, just uh, bear with me. The first part of it, honestly, this should be two videos, but the very first part of it is a uh, show vlog, and then the second part of it is uh, just me talking to you guys about a somewhat serious topic. So uh, I hope you enjoy the video, and with that being said, here we go. I have all of my carriers ready. So I need to go out now and uh, get the rabbits to fill up these carrying cages. Look at this, you guys. This is insanity. This just tells you how much snow we actually got. It is so bright out here. Holy cow. What you doing, man? What are you doing, bud? <laughs> we have our little distinct pathway out here to the rabbit hutches. Come on, buddy. Let's go. So in case you're wondering, since it's been cold out, I just have the curtain drawn on the rabbits like almost all the time right now. Now next week, I won't have to do this because next week it's gonna finally be, I think, above freezing. So we won't have to worry about doing this. Now, my curtain, it definitely could use some improvement, but hey, it has worked really well for us don't really have much complaint on the whole drop curtain situation. Hi guys! Today we had our first baby hopping out of the nest box. I know my solstice. We're having a little bit of nest box eye with our babies. But it's not a big deal unless it gets infected. I don't think it's going to. What are you guys doing? <laughs> I took the blue one out but the little black one jumped out when I did that. Oh. They're gonna start terrorizing her, wanting milk all the time. Hi, Soul. Hi. <laughs> See, that's where the nest box eye is. He's okay. Their eyes are open. They just, oh, I missed that one jumping back in. If you guys are wondering about all of this, I, I don't typically line the bottom of my rabbit cages with hay. Uh, but it has been consistently below freezing for like nearly a month. So I just decided that maybe it was a little bit more important that the rabbits aren't as clean, but maybe that they don't get drafts coming up and chilling them. I think that's, I think that's a little bit more important than keeping them as clean as possible right now. Do you need help getting back in, little, little thing? Here, I'll help you. This is Mira. She's the last, one of the last babies that I had from Hollyhock. She's huge for her age, so she's actually entered as an intermediate this time. She's a pretty girl. I'm gonna have to carry these guys one by one. These are the little cards that I made for them. Just helps me know which one to get out, because eventually they all start to look the same. Look out, babe. Look okay. out. Now obviously these cages are not meant for long term whatsoever. Actually I hate even letting them stay overnight in these cages. There's room enough for them to turn around and lay down, but they're very small. What I'm trying to do is, like I've removed the divider on that one, so that one's really big. I'll show you. I just recently picked up this carrier right here. This one is actually much bigger. So I'm trying to convert all of my carriers to this size. I really like this size. In case you guys weren't sure about how much snow we actually got, this is, this is my car. <laughs> all right, buns are packed up. That empty cage up there is if we find another rabbit that we want. <laughs> 
but other than that, we are ready to go. Sorry if this part of the video is a little bit less uh, quality, you guys. I have to use my phone for it. We are on the way to Canton. It's about three hours. Uh, total drive is about three hours and 20 minutes. So uh, we'll be on the road for a while. I just went under the Ohio. <laughs> Welcome to Ohio side. We're so close to the Ohio border though, so it's um, it's not that exciting. <laughs> I'm probably going to stop for food in like the next hour. You have to have the obligatory Starbucks when you go to a rabbit show. You just have to. Like that. It's a rule. You have to. just found food like 30 minutes ago. I was starving. Um, I got off on an exit because I finally saw a Starbucks sign and we have to have that. But I don't know where it is. The goal today is to get to the Stark County Fairgrounds before 8 or 9. I think it's 8 actually. Uh, and I need to get there because I'm dropping the rabbits off tonight, so, um, they, I'm, I'm dropping them off tonight so I can spend the night in the hotel with my friends, and then tomorrow I won't have to unload everybody, they'll already be unloaded, and I've never done it this way before, but I'm kind of glad because unloading is such a hassle, especially when it's so crowded in the morning, like when everybody's showing up, so... Yeah, I think it'll be good. Let's see, where's the Starbucks? What do we want? It's a toss-up between peppermint mocha and white chocolate mocha. I'm thinking peppermint mocha. Hi, welcome to Starbucks. We're gonna get started for you today. Hi, can I get a tall peppermint mocha and a chocolate chip cookie? Tall peppermint mocha and a chocolate chip cookie, of course. And that's it. Could be seven ten. Thank you. Thank you. put the rabbits in the building. I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right guys, so we are at the show and um, I'm just going to kind of show you what this looks like, I guess. Uh, but I am set up where my friends are set up. I'm sorry, I look really terrible right now. It's been a long day. <laughs> Basically after this, I will just leave and I'll go to the hotel and meet up with my friends. And then tomorrow morning we come back and we show rabbits. So yeah, here's what it looks like. The hotel I got here last night and I forgot to film it because of course I did but it is morning and we're getting ready to go to the rabbit show but first they're gonna go to Dunkin Donuts I'm gonna go to Starbucks and then we'll we'll get there and we'll start showing so yeah say hi, hi. <laughs> All right, Ryan, what are we doing? Yeah. We're at a rabbit show. This is my friend Trisha's son, Ryan, and he shows many Rexes. Say hi, Trisha. Hi. I cannot get Cassia to leave her name tag alone. So hopefully somebody has tape. So 
So we just had our first show and I got absolutely annihilated. <laughs> That's okay though. We are currently, if you guys saw my live the other day, we are currently switching feed. So all of my rabbits kind of feel bony right now. So they just all kind of feel out of condition. So I wasn't really expecting them to do very well. But uh, hopefully by next month at that next show, we'll have them feeling a little bit better. I'll try to get some footage of judging the silver foxes or the creams uh, here in a little bit. I didn't get it this time, it was very confusing. There were lots of changes to the paperwork, so. But right now, just chilling with Cassia. I got a leg. You got a leg? Yeah. That's exciting. I know, that's her second one. Aww. Isn't that cool? Thank you. She's so sweet. It's been a really fun day today. And so now I think what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going to get sushi. Are we getting sushi? Yeah, we it. So the plan is that we're gonna go, go get sushi after this. And then uh, these guys are staying in Ohio, but I'm actually heading home tonight, so I have a drive ahead of me today. So it's been a pretty full day, so I'm excited to be home though. You guys asked me on the live if I was planning on getting any new silver foxes anytime soon, and of course I said no. But this is Tundra. <laughs> Tundra is from Five Buck Rabbitry from Nancy Woolham, and I'm really excited to have her. Look at this fur, you guys. Look at that silver fox fur. Very, very nice. I brought Tundra home because I think that she's going to help our hindquarters fill out a little bit more. My silver foxes are, have really nice shoulders, and some of them have really nice depth too, but we could really use some help in the hindquarter area, so I'm hoping that this little girl is gonna be able to help us with that. Hi girl, you're cute. She's one of the friendliest rabbits, guys. She's so cute. Hi. Both of these girls, both my cream does, are uh, going to be giving birth. I think their due date's March 2nd. I need to double check on my calendar, but uh, we'll be putting nest boxes in there soon. And <laughs> Clove has a mouthful of hay right now. She's so cute. Both of them have been early hay stashing, so I was asking my Instagram followers if they think that Camille was having a false pregnancy or if they thought that she was actually pregnant, and I think she's actually pregnant. Um, she's nested early before. I think here she's had a total of, I think this will be her fourth litter here, and this will be Clove, Clove's very first litter here. So today I just wanted to talk about something, and. I try to be as transparent with you guys as possible. So I went to the show this last weekend in Canton with six rabbits. I had Mira, Ember, Sprig, Cricket, Nitro, and I had Cassia. Now there's one rabbit that has been a weak link here, and 
I'm actually really sad that uh, he is, and it was Nitro. And so uh, the only way that I could bring Tundra home is if I were to swap her out with another rabbit. I never want to take care of more rabbits than I'm able to uh, within these cages, really. The joy of rabbit raising for me comes into how well I am able to give these guys quality of life. I am a small homesteader and um, I take my rabbits very seriously. I take my silver foxes very seriously. We're just starting with creams, but I was raised to breed to the standard of perfection. That's one thing a lot of my followers don't actually know about me is that I, I'm not a newbie at breeding rabbits. I actually did this from the time I was 10 to 18 years old. I competitively bred and showed Dutch rabbits in my teen years. And that was one of the biggest joys for me was that, and, and that was my project. Like nobody helped me with that. My parents weren't into rabbits. My brother wasn't into rabbits. That was my thing. And I, I just had so much pride from it. And I still remember remember winning best of breed for the first time ever as a teen in 4-H. That was like, that was so exciting to me because it was my thing and it was all of my pride like poured into those rabbits, like all of my hard work. So um, that is, that is where my love for rabbits came from. I had them as a kid. I read books about them. I would rather read educational books about animals than like story novels. Um, why are we out here? Well. I wanted to introduce you to my bunnies! All of my bunnies, and right now there's 13 of them. And as you can see, he's not one of my special colors, which is black, but he's chocolate. Aren't you, buddy? Your paws are wet. What did you do? Stroll up here. She's not black either. She's what we call a blue Dutch. It's not gray, it's blue. If you call it gray, we'll get mad because gray, gray is a whole different thing when you go into Dutch. This guy in here, He's been here for a very long time, and he actually belonged to my very first litter of Dutch rabbits. So he's he's really old. He's like six or seven. I've had Dutch for like a long time. Cider is my amazing boy. Cider has two legs, Grand Champion certificate, and um, he got best of variety in 4-H, so that was amazing. And he can come out if he wants to. He's a big baby, but he's also a troublemaker, aren't you? If you haven't noticed already, yes, cider is my very favorite. Now, like I said, I am trying my very hardest to breed to ARBA standard of perfection, which means that I'm trying to actively improve the Silver Fox and Creme d'Argent breeds right now. And sometimes what that means is that we have to make hard decisions. And Nitro had been to, I think, out of three shows, there were seven total shows because some of those shows were triples and Anyway, he, he showed like seven times, and throughout each time of showing him, he just wasn't getting the remarks that I wanted him to get. And as he grew, I kind of recognized that myself. The reason that I held Nitro back to begin with was because of his fast grow rate, and believe me, it has its part, definitely, in um, raising meat rabbits. I, I'm happy that, you know, keeping him and, uh, and recognizing that he could help us in that way uh, could help us. But he was really lacking in overall Silver Fox commercial body type. And so uh, when you would run your hands over him, it was just, he wasn't filled out the way he should have been. Uh, he was just very, he was weak in so many areas. And now that's not to say that he doesn't have his place in my herd. I bred him to Soul, and currently she has six of his babies over there and I definitely want to keep one of them as long as they uh, turn out to be good rabbits. Sometimes you don't always know but you you'll never know unless you you know breed that rabbit and see what they can produce. So with that being said I got the advice of several seasoned breeders at the show and I said what do you honestly think of this rabbit and we set him up on the table and we just looked him over for a good probably 15 minutes. We just looked him over and said, you know, pros and cons. The pro being he had really long, luxurious silver fox fur. Gosh, his fur was gorgeous. I loved his fur. Another pro of Nitro is that, you know, his fast grow rate, like I said, he has a, he had a really nice grow rate. And I'm glad that I held on to him and got to see him grow out. We weighed him and uh, I think that he was almost nine months old and we weighed him and he was 10 pounds. So I'm like, yes, I am on the right track. He might've actually gotten a little bit heavier 
Um, but what we have decided to do by the time we were done evaluating him is uh, we decided it was best to cull nitro. And uh, when I say cull, I, I mean terminally. There's some rabbits that I will uh, sell as breeders. Like I will probably be selling some of my proven does later on down the line because I think that they are uh, very pretty rabbits. But I won't sell rabbits that I don't think are going to improve somebody's herd. So because of all of the things that we just kind of discussed and uh, noticed with him, we just decided that it was best to terminally cull him. And it does suck. It's, it's one of the hardest parts of raising rabbits. And I won't lie to you guys, I teared up. What we ended up doing is uh, my friends Amber and Trisha from Matt Nakers and Shelt Nakers Rabbitry ended up taking Nitro with them. Uh, they paid me a dollar per pound for him and they are going to be using him as a learning tool for other people um, at a butchering class. And I know that a lot of people that aren't into meat rabbits, they're not gonna understand this and they're, they're going to think this is absolutely awful. But listen guys, Nitro was not a pet. Nitro was livestock. The only rabbit that I really consider a pet here is Sprig. The fact that he is going to be used uh, in a humane way to teach others how to butcher their own meat, I like that. I'm glad that I did not have to do it, but at the same time, there are going to be decisions like this that I'm going to have to make. A lot of decisions like this. Calling rabbits for quality is something that is necessary and it's really hard sometimes. I would rather have a good relationship like this with my animals than become so numb that I don't care. It's just the way that we are having to do things to, in order to breed the most quality silver fox that we can. And I'm not saying, guys, just because I have a platform does not mean that my silver fox are the end-all be-all of all silver foxes. I really appreciate everybody that thinks my rabbits are gorgeous, but trust me, guys, I have a long way to go before I think that they're anywhere near perfect. Now, I'm not saying that they're not good starters. I think that my silver foxes are definitely getting there. And I'm excited for what where they're headed, but I do not have a big ego to say that my silver foxes are the best out there for sure. So I can't say that, but the goal is to get there. And uh, I don't plan on slowing down anytime soon. Getting there means that we have to make decisions like this and it, it does suck sometimes and I will miss Nitro. His legacy can hopefully be passed down by some of the babies that Solstice is currently taking care of. So. I just wanted you guys to know because he's not going to be in any more videos and uh, that is just the reality of it. So I hope that you guys appreciate this um, honest look at calling rabbits, even the ones that you really, really care for. Like I said, it's tough, but sometimes we have to do what we have to do. Now the rest of my rabbits right now I am actually pretty confident in. I don't really see us having to call anybody that we currently have. I can definitely see selling some proven breeders though. Not for a while though. We're still working with these guys. <laughs> get Clove. She's collecting hay. I'm hoping guys that I can get that third part of the rabbit breeding series up soon. I have been way off my game lately. Just there's a lot going on here. Uh, emotionally and just life stuff and uh, I really appreciate that you guys have stuck around. I can't believe it's 8,000 subscribers. Like that is insane to me. And I just, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. We have nowhere to go but up. And I am just, I'm so excited of this journey that I decided to take with you guys and YouTube and everything that entails. It's been so rewarding. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I'm sorry if the show vlog was a little bit jumbled. It's probably the last show vlog that I'm going to try to do with my camcorder. It's just, it's a lot. I'm not very good at uh, trying to control the camera while I'm in a crowded building. So I think from now on what I'm going to do is I'm going to nix the idea of doing show vlogs on YouTube. And instead, if you guys want to see uh, how the show is going, you should definitely follow me on Instagram because I'll, I'll start posting stories of things that are happening during the show. So if you guys would like to see that, uh, leave a comment down below. Follow me on Instagram, it's Tealstone Homestead. 
and uh, I would love to see you there. So with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and I will see you guys in the next video.